Hey everyone, it's Stephen Wagner with the Tech Journal at www.stephenwagner.com. Today we are on our third video of the Windows Server 2022 video series, covering everything from installing Windows Server 2022 to creating an Active Directory domain with Windows Server 2022. In this third video, we're going to be covering something super simple, joining a member Windows Server 2022 server to a Windows Server 2022 domain. I've recorded all these videos in the same day, so I'm getting a little bit uh, restless saying Windows Server 2022 to Anyway, so to the desktop share. So uh, pretty much exactly where we left off, we have uh, a server, tn-srv01, where we installed Windows Server 2020 <laughs> It's been a long day. And we've, uh, in video two, we uh, installed Active Directory domain name services to it and promoted it as an Active Directory domain controller. Now, just as a reminder, we have a PFSense firewall providing routing and internet access to this test network that we've configured. Now, in this video, we're going to be joining a member server, also running Windows Server 2022, to the domain. <laughs> So as part of the network design, we're going to jump into our trusty, super duper important network documentation. And we're gonna create an entry for the new server, which is going to be called tn-srv02. This for now is just gonna be a member server. We don't know what services we're gonna be putting on it, um, but uh, we just wanna make sure that we have it in here. And we gotta make sure that we document that we're running Windows Server 2022. I don't know why I'm struggling saying that so much. So the LAN network adapter will be configuring as 192.168.10.11. Surprise, surprise. It's gonna be on the same subnet. 255.255.255.0. Services are going to be to be determined. Now, in the last video, we also configured a DHCP server, which essentially hands out IP addresses to computers and network devices on the network. Now, with servers, you typically don't have them auto assign. So in this documentation, we chose that we were going to give it this specific IP address inside of the range. And we're going to configure it as a static because servers should always be configured with static IP addresses so that they don't res uh, oh, it's been a long day, so that they don't require the DHCP server to function. Um, if the DHCP server were to go down, then that could potentially cause an issue when the DHCP IP lease expires, which in our environment is eight days, sometimes it's shorter than other environments. And at the same time too, the IP address should never actually be changing for that server. So that's why we set it as a static IP. Now, if you've seen my static IP versus DHCP reservations video, you might be asking, Stephen, why don't we use a DHCP reservation? Um, again, it goes back to the, the statement that I just made a couple few moments ago about how we don't want the server to rely on another server to function. In the event that the DHCP service is unresponsive, fails, um, if it's a static IP, the server will continue to operate and be on the network providing functions, whereas that could be a different story if the server was configured with a DHCP address. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a virtual machine here that I've configured. Now to save you some time, what I did is I booted this virtual machine up and I installed Windows Server 2022 onto it. Um, I've done nothing but install the operating system, configure a local administrator password, and of course, um, installed VMware tools for the drivers. Now you'll notice uh, I've got eight gigs configured, four CPUs, it's got 120 gig thin provision disk. Um, we have the Windows Server 2022 ISO configured on it. We don't even need that. So we'll just do that, disable the uh, connected. Oh no, okay, well let's just leave that. Let's pretend that we never touched that. Forget I did anything or said anything. Um, and the network, it's on the test network that we've configured. So we'll just go ahead and power this on. And again, all I've done is installed the operating system and installed VMware tools. So as part of this process, there's virtually three things that we need to do. One, we have to give the server the proper computer name, then restart it. Then we need to configure the static IP, 
and then restart it. Those can be interchanged. There's no specific order that those need to happen in. And then the third step is going to be to join it to the domain. So we'll just log in here. Keep in mind that this is the local administrator account and not the domain administrator account because we haven't joined it to the domain yet. So any user accounts that we've configured on the domain, this server can't access it yet until it becomes a member server. And here's that pesky server manager that we will not show again. And actually, while we're at it, we'll go to manage server manager properties and we'll stop this from starting up. Go ahead and close that. Now we're going to right click on the network and internet settings. We're going to go to ethernet, change adapter settings, options, right click on this bad boy, go to properties. Now we're going to configure the internet protocol version for TCP IPv4 protocol. And this is where we're going to configure the static IP. Actually, before I do that, so we've just set it back to default. I want to show you if we click on start and go to command and type in IP config, you'll actually notice that it's already received an IP address from our DHCP server. So it already knows that the domain is stevenwagner.com and it's received an IP address from the DHCP server. And actually, if we go to the domain controller, you'll remember how we left off with the uh, DHCP configuration settings. If we go to the address leases and refresh this, we will now see that 192.168.10.100 was assigned to this, which is our member server. We haven't changed the computer name, but that's it. But we don't want it using DHCP. So we're gonna jump back to the new server. We're gonna close out of this command prompt window. And we're going to go to properties for that IPv4, use the following IP address. And we're going to type in the IP that we specified inside of this network document, documentation document. 11, 255, oh, that's all done. The gateway, whoops, goes to the PFSense firewall IP. And then our preferred DNS server is going to be the domain controller, which is 192.168.10.10. So we'll hit OK, close. And just to make sure that we didn't mess anything up, we'll just click on start, run. We'll go to HTTP google.com. And you'll notice we have internet access, which means that everything is working properly. Now the next step is going to be to change the computer name. So I'm gonna click on start and I'm gonna type in advanced system settings. We're gonna to go to computer name and we're gonna change it from this win dash something generated. I'm gonna change it to TN dash SRV. Whoops. I'm gonna change it to TN dash SRV02. Click OK. It's gonna tell us that we need to restart. I'm gonna click close and yes, let's restart the server. Control delete. Again, we're logging in with the local administrator password. So now we've set the computer name, we've set a static IP address. Now all that we need to do is join it to the domain. So we'll go to advanced system settings, go back to computer. Oh, we have to change the time zone. So we'll right click on the time. Now time zone with Active Directory is not important. However, one thing that I do wanna mention is that clocks are very important with Active Directory. If you have servers, member servers, or computers, or even additional domain controllers that have an offset with the time from the other domain controllers, they will lose communication. There is a gap, a certain amount of leeway that it allows. So if the clocks don't match, it can be offset by just a smudge. But once it hits a preset limit, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, um, computers won't be able to communicate with domain controllers. So that's one thing to keep in mind. That's one thing that's really important about uh, network time protocol, NTP. And in business environments, you wanna make sure that your domain controller is the chief when it comes to time. I'm not gonna get into that in the video, but your domain controllers are the time keepers and you want to make sure that the uh, member servers and the workstations call out to it for the correct time so here we are inside of date and time we're going to just maximize this and we're going to change it from pacific time to mountain time close this window you'll see it's 250 which is accurate now inside of system properties computer name we're going to click change and now for domain we're going to type in stevenwagner.com 
Now, if it prompts for the username and password, you know that it is communicating with the domain controller because if it wasn't, it would come up saying that the domain is unavailable and it wouldn't prompt you for username and password. So that's a good sign. Now, what we're gonna do here is uh, we need to type in the uh, domain password. So we're gonna type in the NetBIOS name in this format, Stephen Wagner slash administrator. Now, I think you could also use, actually, let's try this other format. So you can use that first format or you can type in administrator at stevenwagner.com and type in the domain administrator password. And it says, welcome to the stevenwagner.com domain. So we'll hit okay, hit okay, close, restart. And while that system restarts, we'll go back to the domain controller, click on start, we'll go to Active Directory Users and Computers. If we expand the domain, go to Computers, you'll notice that we now have TNSRV02 listed inside of there, which means that it's been joined to the domain successfully. I think we're still waiting for this guy to restart. I'm gonna try doing this again. Now, since this all worked, when this system does restart, um, on member servers, there's essentially two ways that you can log in. You can either log in to the member server using the local user store. So we could log in with the local administrator account, or now that it's been joined to a domain, we can log in using domain credentials. And so what we'll do is when we press control delete, you'll notice here that it's administrator. Now, if we were to type in this password, it would actually be logging into administrator on the local system, which we do not want. We wanna log in as administrator on the domain. So even though they have the same user account, one is for the computer, think of computer name, and one is for the domain. So we're gonna click on other user, and you'll see, this is what's interesting. So it says sign into stevenwagner.com. As soon as we type in the last character of this, you'll see it sign into TNSRV02. We don't want that. So we're gonna clear this out, and we're gonna type in, you can either use this format, Stephen Wagner, which is the net, net BIOS domain name, as well as the username. And you'll notice that now when we type it, it says sign on to Stephen Wagner, or we can clear it out and use the same format that we did when we joined it to the, to the domain, administrator at Stephen. And you'll notice that it's populating sign into as we type this, stephenwagner.com. And then we'll log in using the domain administrator password, and you'll see it accepted it. Now, just to reiterate the differences that there are two local user stores, this only applies to member servers. On a domain controller, once it's promoted to a domain controller, it gets rid of that internal computer user store because it's, now that it's a domain controller, it only has one. It has the, the domain. Um, it's only member servers as well as workstations that have the two different user stores. Now, you'll notice that even though we told Server Manager not to open, that it's popping up again. And that's because we're logged in as administrator on the domain and not administrator on the local system. These are two separate profiles, even though both of the usernames are administrator. So if we were to minimize this, open up the file explorer and go to C colon slash users, you'll notice here that we have administrator. That is the local profile for the local administrator. And then we have administrator.stevenwagner. This is the profile for the domain administrator for the domain Stephen Wagner. Again, always keep in mind that these are two separate accounts. So now we can go in here, server manager properties, do not start automatically. And as always, I really hate the IE enhanced security mode. So I'm gonna turn this off and off and we'll turn on remote desktop for remote management. And that's pretty much it. You've now joined a Windows Server 2022 server to a Windows Server 2022 domain. Um, at this point now, you can go in and add servers and features and roles, uh, do whatever you like. That's outside of the scope of this video, but look for, look for it in future videos inside of this video series. Um, that's it. I really hoped you liked this video. Uh, please like this video if you already haven't subscribe to the channel and stay posted for more videos inside of this video series. Again, it's Stephen Wagner with the Tech Journal at www.stephenwagner.com. Have a great day. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.